Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm super excited because, as you know, we do a lot of author interviews and inspirational interviews with authors. And today we have with us um, a gentleman called Wendell Miracle. And yes, that is his last name. And he's going to tell us um, the origins of his last name. It's a very interesting story as well. But I want to just give you a little bit of background as to who Wendell is. He's the founder of Hope Nuggets. He also has a website, too, and we'll share that with you across the screen as well. He started his movement to bring hope to people who are facing hopeless situations and giving them practical steps to accomplish their dreams. The motivation behind all of this was that he had suffered um, a huge bout of anxiety and depression back in 2012, his mom um, passed away from breast cancer, and it was a very dark time in his life. He lost his job, his life savings, and he almost went bankrupt because of all of these depression issues and personal issues. And then one day he realized that life is too short to be depressed. It's too short not to enjoy every single day. So he decided to be happy. And he also decided to find out how to overcome depression and accomplish big dreams by studying the lives of people who have done it. So flash forward to today, he's now living in abundance in his everyday life. He's a professional speaker, an author, a life coach, and a sales guru. And he's completely obliterated depression and he's here to help you fight yours too. So Wendell, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. My pleasure. Great. So let, let's let start with what are the origins of your name? Because when I first saw it, I, I never saw anyone with that last name before. And I thought, well, maybe that's his real last name. So share with us where that originated. Great question. So I was born in the Philippines. Um, a lot of people, his name was PLA. It's Filipino, but it sounds French. And a few years ago, I applied for U.S. citizenship. And when you apply to change your last name, legally, it costs about $800. But when you apply on top of your citizenship, it's completely free. So I thought, you know what? Let's be efficient with this application fee that I'm paying and get my last name changed as well. And there's, um, I grew up in church, and we've all, I've always been taught that names have meaning. Uh, what you call yourself, you become. You know, um, like there's this Bible character named Joseph. That means God will add. So he always had multiplication in his life. And for me, Wendell literally means miracle. I mean, sorry, traveler. So now when you read Wendell Miracle, when you read my name, it's traveling miracle. That's wonderful. I love that story. That's great. And, and I totally believe that names do hold, they're very powerful, just like words are, same exact thing. So tell us about, let's start with your book. So tell us what, what drove you to write this book? What was your inspiration? And what do you hope to bring uh, to people after they read it because I did read it and it was very inspirational and I found a lot of really good nuggets in there um, that helped me personally too. So talk to us a little bit about it. Yes. Um, first off, let me backtrack and talk about um, Hope Nuggets as well um, sure. because I want people to know why I call it that. The reason why is back in 2013, Instagram only gave you 15 seconds to do a video. So now they give you like a minute to 30 minutes now. So literally it was a nugget size video and it's designed to bring you hope, hence the name Hope Nuggets. Great. Um, so, and people have short attention spans. So I never believed in doing long videos. I believe in 15 second, 30 second clips just to get you through your day at two o'clock on a Tuesday afternoon when you had too many carbs and you need to take a nap. Here's right. a kick in the butt. Right. <laughs> so that's where that came from. Um, and as far as the book, it's filled with nuggets um, and it's based on all the experiences that I've had over the last seven years of overcoming anxiety and depression. So I, and the book is short too, by the way, it's only a hundred pages. And I did that on purpose because a lot of people say, you know, I don't have time to read a 300 page book. You don't have that excuse now because it's a hundred pages and it's filled with practical steps to overcome anxiety and depression. And I'm passionate about that because I went through it. And for those who are going through it, I want them to overcome it as well. So obviously you're a, a, um, a religious person, you, you're, you're a believer, am I correct? Spiritual correct. In, that, in that sense. But if folks are not, they can still enjoy this book and, you know, pull a lot of juicy nuggets out of it as well. Am I right? 100%. You know, like I grew up, you know, with a Christian lifestyle, but 
this book and my message has catered to everyone across the globe, you know, no matter what religion you are, whether Buddhist, Muslim, even atheists, you know, like it, it is a message that you can take with you and apply it to your life, no matter what your beliefs are. Okay, great. Now, in your book, you, you talk about the first step. You have, what, seven steps, am I correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay. So the first step is you talk about gratitude. And you say that every day you do this certain, um, I, you have certain steps you take mm -hmm. to show, you know, your God, your creator, how grateful you are. How do you practice these steps? Do you verbally say these things or are they things that you think in your head? Like, tell us what your steps are. 100%. Um, I believe that my morning routine is very powerful. And I believe that the way you start your day determines the type of day that you're going to have, you know. And the first thing I say every morning is, God, I'm grateful that I woke up this morning and I opened two gifts, my eyes, you know, and it's just like a beautiful thing because the reason why they say to practice gratitude is because we're not naturally grateful people. We are natural complainers. We always have this attitude of not enough. You right. know, the first thing you wake up in the morning is, shoot, I didn't get enough sleep last night. You know, the first one of our first thought is, shoot, I'm not going to have enough money to pay my bills. Like, so we have this not enough mentality. So what gratitude does is it puts you in a state of abundance because it is literally impossible to be sad and grateful at the same time. So if you start your day being grateful, you put yourself in this aura and, and vibration of happiness that it's very hard to get out of. So what I tell my followers is when you wake up, list at least three things that you're grateful for. It doesn't have to be anything big. It could be the fact that you woke up. It could be for your health. It could be the fact that you're able to, to see another day. And then and you could add to that list every day. And once you do that, you know, again, you put yourself in a state of happiness that attracts more wonderful things in your life. But how do you practice that? Like, do you verbally say that out loud? Do you write it down? Do you think it? Like, how does that work? Because a lot of folks are grateful, but they don't know how to like express it. Great, yes, there's certain ways to do it. It depends on what works best for you. For me personally, I say it out loud because um, I believe sometimes I believe in affirmations and when you say something long enough, even if it's not true at first, you believe it. You know, mm -hmm. like when people who are sick, I always tell them, say to yourself, I am healthy and I'm grateful for the health I do have. And it might seem weird because like, no, I'm not healthy, I'm actually sick. But when you say it long enough and believe it, then it manifests in your life. So for me personally, I say it out loud. Um, I think it as well. But the biggest thing is you have to feel the energy of gratitude because you can say affirmations all day, but if you don't feel it, it won't be as effective. So I do verbalize it. So even folks that are really having t you know hard time and they're not waking up feeling blessed, you're advising them to, to verbally say these things and you know to count their blessings, whatever they may be. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, I've, my mom taught me to count my blessings. And there's this quote in my book that I put. I said, it's better to lose count naming your blessings than to lose your blessings by counting your troubles. <laughs> because when you count the, your complaints, they multiply. When you count your blessings, they multiply too. So you have the choice which one you'd want to see multiply. Now you talk about blessings in your book. So how could we be a blessing? How are you a blessing? Yes. I, I love that because one of... I and sales and life and quotas we have to hit goals and things like that but i believe every day we should reach what's called the blessing quota it's one random act of kindness this is what leads this is one of the things that leads to happiness it could be something small you could open a door for someone who's elderly in a wheelchair you know somebody who's when you cashier is not smiling you can compliment them and make their day like those little acts of kindness not only bring you know happiness to that person but it brings happiness to you and i believe that when you give out love and you give out blessings you become blessed as well. So essentially it's paying it forward. I mean, everybody, you know, was that was like a big thing at one point, paying it forward. So you're saying that being a blessing is to essentially pay it forward and do um, acts of goodness and kindness for other folks, right? Yes, and honestly, like it feels really good to give, you know? I mean, growing up in church, I thought it was better to give than it is to receive. And I believe that we're not blessed just so that we can have it for ourselves i believe that we're blessed like with myself like i've learned these principles to be happy it would be an absolute crime if i didn't share it with the world and it feels wonderful to be able to not only share you know blessings that you have but if, you know i mentioned in my book if you can sing you know like share that talent with the world if you can speak if you can write it would be a shame if you didn't use that to be a blessing
Why is it so difficult for us to love ourselves? Why do you think that's so? You know, you talk about that in your book, self-love. And obviously, you always hear if you don't love yourself, you can't love other people. But why do you think that, and I believe personally that that's what leads, you know, is, is a great protagonist to anxiety and depression and so on, all other mental illnesses. Why do you think that we struggle with self-love? Uh, that's a great question. And I be- one of the biggest reasons why people struggle with self-love is because they compare their lives to others. And I'm a big proponent of social media. I love what it's, I love the platform and how I'm able to share it. But the problem is, as a regular consumer of it scrolling through our phones, you know, you might see the person that you went with in high school that's doing better than you, right. supposedly. You know, somebody who is you know, single and depressed and they see all their friends married, it's going to make you depressed. You know, if you see somebody who's trying to, you know, who you're trying to have kids yourself and you see all of your friends popping babies, like it's nothing, you know, and you can't, you've been trying, it's going to be easy to be depressed. But I always tell people that comparison is the thief of joy. And if you compare your behind the scenes to somebody else's highlight reel, it's going to make you depressed. And the problem with social media is that a lot of that stuff you see on there isn't even real. You know, a lot of people, post stuff on there to impress people when they might not even have a thousand dollars in their bank account. You know, so like I always tell people, so stop comparing your life to others. Be happy with who God created you to be. And also this, you have to understand that my timing for my life is going to be different than yours. You know, some people are meant to get married at 21. Some people are meant to get married at 40, you know, but either one or none, none of them are bad. You know, both of them are beautiful things. I always tell people it's never too late to find love and it's never too late to be successful. That's so true. And you're right on about the comparison thing. Um, you know, we've written articles about that before, too, because it's it's really a detrimental uh, thing for the human psyche to to do that to yourself and especially prevalent on Facebook. And like you said, Instagram. And um, now since we're talking about social media, tell us about your Instagram. And I've been checking you out stalking you for the past week and i love your instagram i love your snippets of your nuggets of wisdom they're so motivational talk to us about what you're doing on social media and why yes so um again i started the page in 2013 i did it just for fun a friend and i decided you know what um let's not do these five minute youtube videos because people's attention spans are so short these days um they have this thing on social media it's called a through play it's when you post a video, you can see how many people actually watched it from start to finish. Two to five minute videos, people stopped watching it a minute in. So when Instagram came out with these videos of 15 seconds, everybody was watching it from start to finish. I started this 2013 because I wanted to bring hope and inspiration to people. I wanted you to be able to watch a video again at two o'clock in the afternoon on a Tuesday when you're exhausted and then give you the strength to make it through the rest of your day. And I just started doing that for fun. And then over the years, it just kept growing. You know, it went from 100 followers in 2013 to over 300,000 now. And I'm just so humbled and grateful and blessed that it's, you know, been able to reach people around the world. And what I'm doing now is I just want to continue to spread that message of hope. I want people to be able to, you know, see a video, be inspired and apply it to their life. That's, that's great. I I really love that, especially in the times that we're living right now, it's so difficult for folks to find a a reason to even get up in the morning. They've lost their livelihoods. They've lost, they can't see their family. So it's so, it's such a challenging time for all of us. That's why I think it's so important for folks to be able to get even 30 seconds of inspiration. So that's beautiful. Now in your book, you literally danced your dreams to fruition can you tell us why it is that you believe that dance and the physicality of that makes such a difference in our day and in the way we think and feel yes i'm glad you asked that this is the my favorite part in the whole book is chapter seven and when i talk about the chapter is called dance like you have it already you know and um so I'm going to go religious and non-religious. You know, in the Bible, Jesus said, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe you've received it and you shall be yours. And then I also read about this ancient Indian Cherokee tribe that always did dances before it rained. So every time they danced, it rained. And then a government official asked the Indian tribe, how come every time you dance, it rains? You know, and then the Indian tribe said, you know what? No, we dance until it rains, you know? So basically you pray until it happens, you dance until it happens. And here's the thing. If, I, if, you, if you were to receive 
all of your goals and dreams right now, like how would you respond? You know, some would shout, some would sing. I would dance. And, and, and dancing is powerful because, first of all, music heals. Uh -huh. Music raises your vibration, especially if it's your favorite song. And you can't be depressed when you're listening to your favorite song. You know, and th for those of you who are manifestors watching this, who believe in the law of attraction, you know, that's a popular thing right now, too. It, law of attraction states that if, in order to receive your desire, you have to believe you already have it. So how can you put yourself in a state where you believe you have it already? I believe dancing is one of those things. It could be visualizing. It could be writing it down. But for me, what's worked for me is dancing because dancing makes me happy. It makes me feel good. That's how I start my day. I don't go to work. I don't do anything until I do my morning dance. And since I've been doing that the last few years, every day seems to be magical. And even the days that don't seem so magical, I learn something from it and I grow. So I always win in the end when I do this dance. I love it. Tell us a little bit about, in your book, you talk about um, forgiving others for past digressions. I think that's like an important topic because I see a lot of wounded people out there that mm -hmm. hold on to anger, hold on to bitterness. And it might be for a good reason. Maybe something right. terrible was done to them or said to them. How can, can folks move towards forgiveness, towards that state of feeling you know, like not, they've not only forgiven that person, but themselves too. I'm glad you asked that as well, because I want to start by saying I'm a big proponent to health and fitness. You know, um, prior to being a life coach, I was a personal trainer and I believe in living a lifestyle of health. The problem is when you harbor unforgiveness, like studies have shown that it literally reduces your health and vitality. You know, I heard about this man who held on to unforgiveness and he had arthritic fingers and every, and then when he went to his doctor and he finally forgave the person who did him wrong, that arthritis went away. So forgiveness is good for your health. That's first and foremost. And the thing is, when you forgive, you're not just doing it, you're doing it for yourself. Um, one of the quotes I say in my book is, I forgave so I can set the prisoner free. But then I realized that the prisoner was me. Mm. There's a nugget for you right there. And it's just, uh, it's a powerful thing. Like I heard about the story about this guy who, this guy um, did something really bad to him and they lived in the same neighborhood. So he would literally drive his car around his house so he wouldn't have to go there. And it's like, you're giving that person all your power when you hold on to unforgiveness. Yes. So you got to take your power back by letting go. And you can experience a great tomorrow when you're holding on to the pains of yesterday. That is so very true. Um, where do you see your future? What do you see yourself doing five, ten years from now? Yeah, so um, I'm sure you've heard of a man by the name of Tony Robbins. You know, oh, like yeah. that's one of my idols, Zig Ziglar. You know, so I, I definitely see myself, you know, having three books in the future. I have one right now, but uh, a couple more on the way. Uh, I want to be recognized as a certified life coach around the world. And, and it's not for fame or clout. It's to be effective. You know, I've never did this to be popular or anything like that. I did it so that I can change lives throughout the world. So in five years, if I'm at the audience level of a Tony Robbins, that means my message is getting out there. That means lives are being changed. And that's my goal. That's wonderful. Tell us about your services that you offer on your website. I noticed you have some services, consulting services up there. Yes. So obviously on the website, you can buy the book as well. But um, also I offer one-on-one -on -one coaching, you know, for those who are suffering from anxiety and depression. Um, we could do video calls, phone calls on steps on how to do it. It's more personalized. Obviously, the book will give you the nuggets to do it. But if for your specific situation, we can work one on one together. Um, I also talk about relationships. I talk about finances, um, how to excel in your career, how to climb that corporate ladder. So nuggets of life on how to be successful, happy. Um, I offer those services. Great. Now, you're not a licensed um, psychiatrist or, or therapist or anything like that, right? Mm -hmm, okay. No. But you do help folks deal with anxiety and depression through... Right motivational techniques and so on, correct? correct? Correct. Okay, just wanted to make sure we put that out there. So what else do you want to add, um, either about your book or about what you do day to day to help folks? Anything else you want to add? No, um, just, you know, if you wanted to catch the books on Amazon, um, if you want to check us out on Instagram, you know, please give us a like, follow, you know, we're also growing on Facebook as well. Facebook actually owns Instagram, so it's actually a very, very large platform. Mm -hmm. um, so you can follow us there and, um, you know, we hope to connect soon. Great, great. So, of course, I'm going to have all the information for folks to where they can get your book 
on Amazon and on your website, right? And you're also on other websites like Goodreads and stuff like that, right? Yes, that's correct. Okay. And I'll also let folks know what your website is in case they want to reach out to you. Is there a contact page there or an email where folks can reach out to you? Yes. So on the Facebook page and Instagram, there is a place where you can either send a direct message or an email. Great, great. Just because sometimes folks do want to reach out and, you know, I just want to make sure they have a good place so that they can do that. Yes, well, and on the website you. as well, they, they, you're able to send There's a contact. Too, so. Okay, mm -hmm. perfect. Thank you so much. This was wonderful. And I really love your message of, of hope and inspiration. It's so well needed now. And when you write your next book, please do let us know. We'd love to have you back. Thank you so much for having me. Have a wonderful day. You too. Thank you.